Hello and welcome to another episode of the Synapse e-learning modular series. With us today we have Dr. Gottfried Baldacchino, a resident specialist in dermatology. Thank you, doctor, for being with us here today. He'll be speaking to us about the management of acne. On to my first question. Acne is a common skin condition, especially in adolescents. What constitutes acne? So, as you said, acne is a very common uh, condition in adolescents and it usually involves the pyrosebaceous uh, unit um, of the skin and it usually mainly affects the face, upper back and chest, which are areas which are uh, very dense in sebaceous glands. Now, acne uh, has a whole range of lesions, namely uh, white heads, which are termed as open comedones, um, Blackheads, uh, closed comedones, papules, pustules, pseudocysts, and uh, deep nodules. All of these lesions are usually uh, associated with surrounding erythema due to uh, an inflammatory process. And one might occasionally encounter violaceous uh, lesions because patients frequently squeeze these lesions. And if we were to go into the etiology of the disease, um, how can we cons what constitutes the pathological mechanism of acne? So before going into the pathological uh, process, we've got to visualize the sebaceous gland. Mainly, I like to look at it as a ban bunch of grapes, where the grapes are actually the acini of the uh, gland. The twigs between the, the grapes are the sebaceous ducts and the bigger twig um, being the pyrosebaceous uh, duct. Now, in acne under certain influences such as uh, androgens or um, cytokines um, uh, stimulate disorganized uh, proliferation of sebocytes within the sebaceous glands and they also stimulate uh, uh, keratinocyte uh, proliferation within the ducts. Um, within this whole process the gland actually enlarges because of increased sebum production. On the other hand the ducts become blocked because of uh, cornification within the ducts. Now, this already uh, results in an increased uh, pressure within the sebaceous gland. And besides, this also constitutes an, an, an anaerobic uh, milieu within the sebaceous glands, which favors the growth of uh, various organisms, mainly Pionobacterium acnes. Now, this propionobacterial acne uh, is a bit controversial, but it appears that it uh, uh, hydrolyzes triglycerides within this sebum with uh, the main result of reducing, reducing linoleic acid within the uh, uh, sebaceous gland. Now, a low uh, linoleic acid content actually propagates the, the previous process of stimulating uh, sebocyte and uh, ductal cell growth, thus contributing to a vicious cycle. Besides that, also uh, these bacteria uh, instigate a type 4 cell-mediated hypersensitivity reaction, which contributes to the inflammation within, within the pyrosebaceous unit. Are there any factors which predispose to the incidence of acne? Yes, um, well, mainly the uh, main uh, factor is a genetic one, and we find patients with acne who usually have a family history of acne, and this is also uh, supported by a high concordance between uh, monozygotic twins with acne. Besides the genetic uh, association, one also postulates uh, uh, androgen excess, hypersensitivity of androgen receptors within the pyrosebaceous units, 
and an increased five alpha uh, reductase uh, within the same units, which actually transform te free testosterone to dihydrotestosterone, which is uh, much more potent androgen, which uh, triggers the effect of, of uh, uh, acne, acne mechanism. Doctor, it is a commonly held belief, uh, especially maybe in layman's circles, that fatty foods or dietary changes may influence acne. What do you comment about this? Well, there is no proven evidence that fatty foods, chocolate, etc., um, uh, worsen acne or instigate acne. However, there are some studies which show that uh, people who eat high, uh, a regular diet consisting of mainly carbohydrates um, are at an increased risk of acne, and the, the mechanism is probably due to an increased uh, insulin production plus uh, insulin-like growth factor. Now, this insulin-like growth factor um, needs sex hormone binding globulin to be transported throughout uh, the body. And since most of this is being taken by the insulin uh, growth hormone, insulin-like growth hormone, there is less of the sex binding hormone available for testosterone. So it actually uh, results in a high, higher concentration of free testosterone within the blood, which is more active on its own. So uh, it appears that a high glycemic diet may actually uh, aid in, in the pathogenesis of acne. So through an indirect process involving hormonal yes, levels yes. in the bloodstream. And with regards to acne, obviously diag diagnostically, one would rely mainly on inspection, but are there any other special investigations which one might need? Obviously, you always take a history and, and do a general examination. However, once one is satisfied there is nothing wrong from these, there are usually no specific tests which needs to be done. However, in certain instances, such as menstrual irregularities, uh, hirsutism, virilism, or patients which ver with very difficult uh, acne or uh, acne relapsing on uh, after taking a whole course of isotretinoin uh, should raise a suspicion so at least a hormone profile should be should be performed with regards to treatment what treatments are available well there's a whole range of treatment starting from topical treatment to oral treatment basically topical treatment uh, consists of washes which generally contain uh, salicylic acid and glycolic acids. Uh, their mode of action is generally uh, keratos keratolysis which opens the pores and removes the comedones. Then there are topical uh, keratolytics, again a similar effect but uh, the treatment is in gel form mainly benzoyl peroxide and salicylic acid. Um, another very common uh, mode of treatment is uh, that of topical uh, antibiotics, namely uh, clindamycin or erythromycin, and these are usually combined with a keratolytic. The effect is to reduce the load of propionobacterium acnes and also open the comedones. A third mo mode of uh, topical treatment is uh, topical retinoids like adapalene, retinoic acid and topical isotretinoin and these usually help with the differentiation within the pilosebaceous unit and they also help in apoptosis of uh, defective cells thus opening the pores and reducing the inflammation uh, in this unit. Then there's the oral treatment, mainly uh, oral antibiotics. Most of, most of us use tetracyclines, however macrolides such as erythromycin and azithromycin may be used in patients who are intolerant of uh, tetracyclines. Um, then one can use hormonal uh, manipulation 
and uh, these generally consist of antiandrogens, namely like cyproterol acetate containing oral contraceptive pills, um, spironolactone, which is usually used as a diuretic but has an antiandrogenic effect, and the anti-diabetic uh, tablet metformin, which also has an anti uh, androgenic effect. Um, the most important oral treatment which we consider as our treasure is isotretinoin. This is a, an oral retinoid which offers the best hope that uh, one can treat acne definitively. Um, generally 80% of patients uh, taking uh, isotretinoin or thereabout uh, end up with re complete resolution of their condition. Um, one uh, important thing about isotretinoin is that it has numerous side effects, namely uh, it is very teratogenic and isotretinoin should never be used alone uh, without oral contraception in females. In such patients, uh, females are made to, to sign a consent that they will use the um, isotretinoin in conjunction with oral contraception to prevent any uh, birth defects and so Basically, doing one would prevent any unwanted, to prevent side, unwanted effects. side effects another uh, thing one should consider when taking isotretinoin is to check lipid levels because of its potential of increasing uh, triglyceride levels doctor you've provided us with a very comprehensive aspect overview of the multiple treatment modalities for acne but i think one of the great dilemmas which physicians face when dealing with acne is basically what type of treatment should they start at yes, first? Yes. I mean, obviously, one must be guided by a subjective, uh, by a subjective assessment of the patient, patient's condition. I mean, if you have a patient with mild acne, usually a wash and a topical agent should suffice. However, in moderate or severe acne, um, oral treatment is generally necessary. So, it is very easy to impose uh, oral treatment on patients. However, we do get patients whose uh, perception of their condition is altered in the sense that you might get a patient with a few pimples who feels it's the end of the world, and other patients who have multiple uh, lesions and who don't really bother too much about, about their condition. So, one should discuss the uh, perception of the patient, uh, patient's view regarding treatment. Another thing which might influence uh, the patient's acceptability of treatment might be the accompanying by parents. I mean, some parents have a very adverse um, perspective, perspective mm -hmm. of, say, oral contraceptive pill mm -hmm. or other treatment. I mean, many, many mothers tell you this won't affect my daughter's ability to conceive in the future. So. After having uh, discussed with the patient and the relative, one must suggest the best possible treatment. However, at the end of the day, it's the patient who decides what treatment uh, he, is, he is going to, to receive. And we should avoid being paternalistic in this situation. And uh, prior, obviously, to referring a patient to further specialist care, what general points of advice can a physician give to a patient yes. with acne? I mean, there are a few points which are which seem trivial. However, I mean, it is very important to make it clear for the patient that they mustn't squeeze the lesion, number one. 
Um, that treatment usually takes four to six weeks before uh, the onset of action. So patients must persevere with treatment, especially with oral treatment. Third thing is most uh, patients experience redness and dryness wherever they apply topical agents. So one should advise uh, moisturizer which are dedicated to patients with acne and that these should be used uh, whenever necessary. Uh, another, another point of advice one should give is uh, to avoid um, too much ultraviolet, especially in patients on isotretinoin and uh, minocycline because of photosensitivity and possibility of pigmentation. <clears throat> um, the other point of advice is to tell the patients that if they encounter any problems, they should come back and discuss the matter uh, Fair with enough. you. Yeah. Um, doctor, thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Uh, I, do, I know that acne as a condition may affect many of our patients and obviously careful consideration of this condition will help in the effective treatment of this condition. So thank you so much for your time. I hope that for the sake of our audience, our brief discussion here has helped to further elucidate our, the information which you have on acne. And I invite you to further your knowledge by following us on the Science Facebook page and uh, subscribing to our interviews and e-newsletter. Thank you.